Hey everybody, so glad you could join me today. Just wanted to show you my latest, coolest, cutest fabric bag pattern. This is a vinyl material and I put a uh, just a plain cloth lining. On this bag, I made grommet holes to do a drawstring for this bag. And it's really cool. This bag, it doesn't have a gusset. It, you just have the box corners. So it's really, really simple to make. Um, you can do your own, make your own strap, just like a bag shoulder strap, just like I showed you. So this is a really cool crossbody, or if you make the shoulder strap shorter, it's a really neat bag. I think you'll like it. Um, you can get the pattern online at my Etsy shop. Um, what else? Okay, let's get to it. I'm going to walk you through how you can make this pattern. I make make this bag, but, um, you're going to need my pattern. So I hope you buy it in my Etsy store. Thanks. Okay, so I know I say this just about every, uh, bag pattern that I make, but this has got to be my all-time favorite. This is so cute. Um, I'm using this vinyl type fabric it's instead of leather yeah it's it's vinyl but it's okay it doesn't have a smell or anything and I got it from a local store it was on sale so that's all a good thing and it's really got a pretty pattern so it should be fine now it's not a good idea with this vinyl fabric to poke it with pens to pen something now you can but that's up to you, but double check and make sure it doesn't leave marks in your fabric. So for this pattern, you're going to need to cut two pieces on the fold of the fabric. If that's a problem for you, then you can basically print this pattern again, make a reverse, lay it side by side, and then just lay it out on your fabric. So on the vinyl, so, but I'm actually going to just take some clippers since I'm here at the end. Let's see if you can see this. Okay. So I'm at the end of the fabric and I'm just going to use these quilt clips to clip it to the fold because you've only got to make a straight cut here, a straight cut here and a couple of little notches. So you should be able to do that without any problem. If it is slipping around, then just take some tape. And this vinyl, it, it reacts well to tape. Obviously, you're going to cut through that, but it'll keep it holding down till you get it done. So, I'm just going to clip all that. I'm going to, okay, I'm going to start at the bottom. And I'm just going to clip right here. And I'm going to go ahead and just cut right through. Cut that out. And as you can tell, this vinyl, it cuts really cleanly. And that helps your bag to look good. So just cut that out. Now you could use a rotary scissors and that'll be fine. And then I'm just gonna cut straight down. And then remember, you're gonna need two of these. So I'm gonna have to cut another one on the fold. Now this fabric, I got it at the store, this vinyl I got at the store and it was on sale. Now mostly, the piece was folded, so it had this big old crease on the side. So I'm going to go ahead and use it for this prototype so you can get an idea of what using vinyl looks like. And now this crinkle might be end up on the finished product, but it'll be, it'll be okay. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. So see, now you have one piece that's cut out. Let me see if I can zoom in this way so now you have ooh, still can't quite see it now you have one piece that's cut out so i'm gonna do another one and you want to keep going in the same direction so i'm just gonna i'm actually gonna cut off a piece of this right where that piece uh kind of ended like I said, this stuff was on sale, so I got a lot of it. 
So I get to play around with this a lot. Okay. So say you've got your piece. Um, you could cut on the other side, but I'm not going to. Okay. Got some little straggly pieces here. So I'm going to fold this. And just so you save some of your vinyl fabric, I'm just going to kind of make the fold exactly to the pattern width or at least as close as I can. So that way you kind of save this piece over here. And you never know what you can use that for. But you want to make sure it's even. You're just clamping it down so it will stay still while I cut it. And just gonna use four little clips. Easy peasy. Now keep in mind, sometimes when you buy my pattern from my Etsy store, it might not look identical. The shape is identical, but sometimes I change the words and the information that I'm giving you on there. And these are just little placeholders for where the drawstring is gonna go. So, but you gotta really read what the pattern says about that. All right, this is not quite at the bottom, so I just wanna scooch it down and clamp it back. And yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut here. Starting at the bottom. You don't have to start at the bottom. It's just kind of my preference. Uh, okay, so I'm going to trim that a little bit more. This pattern is, like all my patterns, somewhat forgiving. And you do have to understand that I don't put the seam allowance in here and it's usually like a little dotted line because you know you're going to do that anyway and you might use a half inch you might use a quarter inch um just whatever works for you and i'm going to trim this top straight off because i want it to match up to the other one okay so take this off take the pattern off lay it aside okay cool so now we got that piece we're going to put the two right sides together. That's why it's important to line them up. And that's why it's important also to make sure your cut is correct. Because this can be a little bizarre. So I'm just going to line it up. And I can see that it was me and not the pattern. But when I cut that second piece, you can see that I didn't cut quite right. So, I'm just going to clip this together for a moment. I want to make sure everything's lining up. Everything else is fine. I don't like that because I know that's going to cause problems. And so, just make sure you cut well. Doesn't look like you cut right. Just go back and clean it up a little bit. And this is why it's always good with my patterns or any other patterns. Do a prototype with some scrap fabric so you'll understand better the construction of the bag or purse that you're making. Okay, so cut right. Okay, so see? Oh, almost perfect. Um, I probably could leave this alone, but I'm just being real picky right now because I want this to look pretty. This is probably going to be a bag I'm going to use for a little while. Also, oh, I'll show you, even though this isn't the lining piece that I'm going to use, but I made a lot, I made a, when I did this pattern the first time, I just used a plain white piece of fabric. And when you do this, when you work with, when you create a prototype first, do it on a plain piece of fabric, but then, and if it comes out right, you can use that for the lining on the inside of your bag. Cool. Saves you that extra step. So I'm just going to do a couple more clips because I don't want this scooching around because it's vinyl. It has a tendency to do that. So now there's a couple things you're going to do. This is 
one of the easiest bags to sew. You're gonna stitch here, you're gonna stitch along there, gonna stitch along the other side. And don't forget, um, since this is the outer part of the bag, you don't need to leave an opening for where you gotta turn it inside out. You do that for the lining. Um, okay, looks like when I clipped it, I pulled a little. Yeah, cool. So, I'm gonna stitch across here, from end to end, down the sides. Then, we'll make the little box corners. And I'm gonna go take this over to the sewing machine and I'll be right back. Okay, so as I've stated and as you've seen in some of my other videos, I'm gonna go a little closer. So, I made a stitch all along this edge and the bottom, yep, and the other side. So now, what you want to do is you're going to box off your corners. So, just going to open it up, line up your seams. Don't worry if you're going to have a little extra. It's just the way that it is. I would recommend flattening your seams um, or not. So do that for this side and the other side and we'll be back. Okay, so we're back and here we are with the bag. Looks kind of weird. And we have boxed off those corners and just so you'll know, it is exactly four inches across on both sides and exactly four inches cool so now oh you can make another i only stitch across here the bottom once usually i do that more than once i usually do a double stitch but you can snip right in between be careful not to cut the the uh, stitch that you put in there and that's just because this vinyl material uh, it's just a little bulky ish I'm sure I could make another pattern step where you sew this down and that's fine but anywho let me go ahead and flip this bag inside out just grab the inside turn it inside out and just kind of You can use your hand and you're just gonna there's one corner even a corner's pretty and we're gonna do the other side and i did double stitch my corners okay boom that's the bottom of the bag wow nice nice okay you got a bag wow and this bag is Ooh, this is going to be about 12, 13, about 14 inches deep. And it is about 12 inches wide. Let me see if I can. Well, you'll see some other videos where you'll see this bag is um, really pretty, really nice. I love this. Wow. Box corners came out okay. Looking good. Um... Now on to the next step. This is going to be great. Wait till you see what I do with this bag. It's awesome. Okay, so now we're going to cut the lining. And I actually, sorry, I took a piece of fabric and I folded it once and then folded it twice. And this was a scrap piece of fabric. But fortunately, it works out to be just the size that I need. So, I'm just going to pin it down because this is just the inside lining of the bag. So, you can use pens with this. But with that vinyl, we're really, it's not really a good idea to use um, pens on it. So, I was just feeling that this didn't seem right. But, anywho, um, Got to make sure it's smooth and even so you get a nice clean cut. And pin it down. Pin it down. 
This bag, you will be surprised. At, it doesn't take long to make. But it's going to look like you spent a whole bunch of time working on it. If you're new to sewing, you might. Because, like I said, I want you to take your time. Do it right. Better than rush. Don't rush until you get really comfortable with all the different sewing techniques. Your machine and all of that kind of thing. So... Just going to trim this edge off. And actually, I think I can... Because I had folded this. There's like another fold in there. So I'm just going to cut right down through there. Okay. And get all these little excess trims off. And cut the top part. Boom. Okay, easy peasy. Um, that's not looking really good aligned, so. But then again, this is the inside of your bag, so it's not that big a deal. Now, I'm gonna roughly, I'm gonna put this bag together for you to show you, but I wanna do a pocket on the inside, and I might make that a separate video. I might do that with this one. I'm not sure yet, but anyway, okay. So, but ah. Now you got your two pieces. Um, once again, don't know why I keep doing that. I you gotta make sure these pieces line up, otherwise, your little um your bottom part of your bag is gonna look weird. So that was probably for me just cutting four pieces at once. I don't necessarily recommend it because then you gotta go back and kind of clean this up a little bit. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit off of there actually I'm not gonna worry about that so much but I am gonna make sure that this at these corners line up or your box corners won't look right but then you'll be sad like I would be so cut that a little bit and boom okay remember I'm gonna stitch here stitch there across Make our box corners and move on. Got a little too much there. Sometimes if you leave a bunch like that, it's just going to be bulky in the corners. Even though it's going to be the inside of your purse, it won't really matter. So let me go do this. We'll put it in the purse. And we'll be on to the next step. So as usual, you've got your lining. And this is the uh, outside of the lining. And this would be the inside. So you're going to, remember you always want right sides together. So take the right side of your bag and just put it inside the lining. Oops. Uh -huh. So make sure you can see that. Yeah. Okay. Make sure you line up your seams. Uh, okay. And then... Line up both seams on your bag, and you're going to stitch all the way around the top. Now, unlike other videos, I did leave an opening in the bottom so that when we're done, we can flip the bag inside out. And then we'll just stitch that seam up real easy peasy. Now, if you're going to put straps on this bag, this now would be a good time to do that. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to make some straps which will be a little bit different than straps we've made before, but I'll show you how to attach them and then we'll keep on moving on. So as usual, you've got your lining and this is the uh, outside of the lining and this would be the inside. So you're gonna, remember you always want right sides together. So take the right side of your bag and just put it inside the lining. Oops. Uh -huh. so make sure you can see that yeah okay make sure you line up your seams uh, okay and then line up both seams on your bag and you're going to stitch all the way around the top now unlike other videos i did leave an opening in the bottom 
so that when we're done, we can flip the bag inside out. And then we'll just stitch that seam up real easy peasy. Now, if you're gonna put straps on this bag, this now would be a good time to do that. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to make some straps, which will be a little bit different than straps we've made before, but I'll show you how to attach them and then we'll keep on moving on. Okay, so to show you how to make the strap for this bag, I cut a five inch wide, cord, oh, here's the tape measure, a five inch wide. Okay, so because this vinyl material, if this is what you're gonna make your uh, bat purse strap out of, is a little slippery, a little weird to deal with. Um, I just basically, Fold it in half and mark my midpoint. Then I'm gonna fold, then I fold in the end pieces, right? Okay. And just gonna do that all the way down. Then I'm gonna take it over to the sewing machine. We'll take this part out, but we'll move this down over here. And just gonna stitch all the way down. It's gonna take you a little bit to do this because You've got to kind of clip it all the way and hold it and fold it and make sure it comes out right. But an easier trick, like I said, I'll probably show you that in another video, is to just buy a store-bought strap or use regular fabric. Whatever works for you. Um, something contrasting would make it real pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch this and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, just in case you were wondering... When I did this strap, you didn't see me put in any uh, batting or interfacing because this vinyl material, the four layers that are in there make it pretty, pretty squishy. So now we've got a very nice strap that will work with, that'll match the bag that we're making. Okay, so now we made the strap for this purse. So just basically... Slide that puppy on in there between the lining, remember, right sides together. And at this point, ew, you still don't want to use straight pins. But you do want to use the quilt clips. It'll, it'll make it a lot easier. So just line that up. Center it. Yes, I know my my seams are a little irregular. <laughs> Trying to go ahead and get this done. Okay, so straps in there. You know what? Make my life easy. I'm going to just clip it here and clip it there to hold it in place. I'm going to pull this up just a wee little bit, making sure it's aligned with the center. And I'm just gonna clip, clamp it there on both sides. So that way I'll know that it's holding in the right place. And I did make sure when I put it in there, make sure your strap is not twisted. Otherwise, when you sew this all down, it'll be such a nightmare getting it undone. So, okay, so I've lined that up. I'm double checking, making sure my strap is even. And unfortunately, I used all the quilting clips over there on that side. So I'm gonna use pens if I can get it through all of this fabric and vinyl. Uh, yeah, okay. That, I just needed to hold it in place. And when I get around to that part to stitch, I will be real careful. Um, and remember, we've got an opening in the bottom of the bag to flip it through. That is not going to be big enough to get all this through. But we will in, take some more of these stitches out. And then we'll take care of that. So, let me go ahead and stitch this. And I'll be right back. Okay, voila. All right, we've stitched all the way around the top. Now, where the straps are, I actually stitch like four or five times because I don't want it coming apart. But once again, you're not carrying a bowling ball in this bag, so 
you know, just make sure your stitches are going to be good. So, remember, oh, sorry. Remember, we didn't stitch in the bottom of the bag, left an opening. So now we can just turn it inside out and see what we've got to work with. This is always my favorite part of purse making or bag making because either now you've turned it inside out and it came out awesome sauce or not. I got a few little extra threads here. Okay, what is that? Okay, that's something I did. I cut there for some reason. Okay, I'll take care of that. Um, oh, okay, so now, remember, you still got this opening in your bag bottom. And you want to go ahead and close that stitch up. Unless, of course, you're going to do something else with it. And, yeah, I said I was going to make a pocket for this bag. But I decided not to. A pocket on the inside. Um... Because we'll do it with. I just need you to learn the basics of bag making. All that other stuff is just so extra. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to stitch this together. And then we'll see what the bag looks like. We're almost done. There's a couple more things you need to do to have it resemble the bag that I have in the pictures. Okay. So, oh, I think I missed recording a part. I hope not. So, like I said, we stitched down the that opening where we turn the bag inside out and we'll put that down in there and we've got our straps looking good and this part you need to turn it down you can use this is where you use your quilting clips because you're going to stitch all the way around the top of the bag let me do that and i'll be right back okay this is a super important tip for you when you're stitching Deep making these edges, I strongly urge you to use this quarter inch quilting foot because it has a little guide and it'll help you keep it even. And you can tell this bag is pretty bulky and this machine can handle it, thankfully. But you just want to go slow and take your time because this is one of those little finishing touches that makes your bag look really good. Okay, so we're back. Now, remember when I told you about that vinyl, this vinyl, I, when I got it from the store... It was on sale and it had this fold in it, which with this vinyl fabric, it sometimes that's not going to come out, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'll call that the back of the bag. So this is the front of the bag. And now we're, we're almost done because the next thing we're going to do, if you remember from the pattern, there's these markings from the top. And you might actually need to go a little bit lower. It's up to you. But be careful with this part. And because once you poke that hole in the bag with that uh, stud thing, then that's it. You've got Now you've got a hole in your bag. But you want to do that so you can make the drawstring part. Or you can stop at this point. You've got a real snazzy bag. You can put a little handle. You can put a little... Um, what do you call it? You can put a button on there. Um, you put a snap. You call it a wrap. But you've made a really cute bag. The cuteness of these bags comes from, depending on what fabric and uh, accessories that you use. So, once you learn the basics, and like I, I encourage you, print your pattern. Cut it out with some scrap fabric or some, mus you know, some leftover fabric, muslin, whatever, cotton, and get it all perfected, and then you'll be able to do your really cool bag. Cool. Pretty. Thanks for watching. Oh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm going to put in another part of the video how I got the little, I'm going to do the little drawstring part. Okay, so we're almost done with this bag. I found a really pretty piece of cording that I think will match for the drawstring part. Now, I did not have the right size grommets. So, I'll make sure you can see that. So, I used a smaller one of a different brand that I'm not used to using. And, as you can see, it messed up. But, I have this other type of grommets that, um, 
used to using and that turned out fine. It's way bigger than what I want it to, what I need it to be. I only needed something kind of small. Now this would have been the perfect size because I probably need quarter inch grommets, but these are half inch grommets. I'm gonna go ahead and use these because I want you to see what the final bag product looks like. But ultimately, you should pick and choose your hardware and how you're gonna do it um, when you get a chance. So I'm gonna just go ahead and show you how to do uh, another one of these, how I did this one. And I'm gonna actually make sure I go on the internet and or go to the store and order the smaller grommets. This is actually a half inch grommet and that's probably a quarter inch one but anywho oh before i forget let me zoom back out okay for your bag what you should do and of course i can't find a pen ah there it is once you finish your bag oh by the way i have a block of wood in here so when i work on this but you want to measure your openings about two inches apart so you'll have six on this side and six on the other that way your drawstring bag the top of it you'll be able to close it up nicely um i'm gonna do a different type of bag on something else but anywho when you're doing grommets you need these little tools and a hammer one it just make sure you can see that okay yeah all right trying to get this in frame okay these are the tools you need this is a little cutting tool and it's sharp um this is the outer rim of your grommet this is the bottom which goes on the back and this is a little seat that this will sit in when you're putting it all together and this helps you to close in that little top rim. And of course you need a hammer. I suggest getting one decent size so it'll work for you. Um, this section is going to be, of course, it might be a little loud. So I'm going to do this one. You, there won't be any sound on it, but then you'll see how it's done. And of course, I'll show you the final bag product. So just going to line up where I want this to go. Um, I start, I made some little openings before when I thought I was going to use these hmm. and that just didn't work out for me. So it's okay if you make a pre hole opening or not. If you're using this type of grommet, you probably don't need to. So just going to go ahead and tap. you want it to cut all the way through the layers if you're using if you're using a leather or um, something really thick you really want to make sure you uh, go all the way through so I've taken that little extra piece off and now I've got the front side of the grommet and you can see how it's come through on the back and I'm gonna place the back piece on there now this little seat, uh, I'm gonna put this here. And what you can do is um, do this the other way. So anyway, you could do it inside out, but if there's lots of videos on how to do grommets and eyelets, so I'm sure you will find one that suits you. Uh, my, not, my showing you how to do it this way may not be perfect, but this is what works for me. So. You can see this has like a little lip on it and what you do is you just put it in like that and and what that does that bends that part down so it holds your grommet in place really really nice okay i'm gonna go ahead and do these others without and the other side without showing you and making all this noise and we're almost done. Uh, 
Okay, so I was able to go back and fix the grommet that looked bad. I just took it out. Um, so now I know where I want them to go on the other side. So I'm just going to make a little mark, even though it's going to be on the inside lining of the bag. It doesn't matter because that's going to be the part you're going to... Uh, you're gonna make a hole anyway so now I'm gonna do this a little bit different I'm gonna turn the bag inside out simply because it makes it easier for me I use this block of wood on the inside and Yeah, now I can punch out the holes, and I know where they need to go, and then when I put the grommet sitting it on this side, I won't have to flip the bag all twisted. So, just going to go ahead and do this part, and I'll show you the finished result, because that's a lot of noise that I know you don't want to hear. Yeah, oh, sorry, I forgot to show you. Yeah, this is what the bag can look like with the drawstring when you uh pull it closed you've got a lot of room in this bag it's actually i forgot to show you about it's about nine inches wide uh yeah okay more like 10 inches wide so let's get on with showing you how to make this bag <laughs> 